we're going to take a first look at the new PepWave BR1 Pro 5G, a new cellular integrated router from PepLink. Hi, I'm Chris with the Mobile Internet Resource Center, and today we're going to take a first look at a router that is absolutely brand new. We actually just got it sent to us by our friends at Mobile Must Have, and it is just starting to ship in the United States. This is the PepWave BR1 Pro 5G by PepLink. So this is a new generation of the PepWave um, BR1 lineup. We've long been fans of the PepWave BR1 Mark II, which we got here, and the um, BR1 Mini over here. This is a lineup that's been around for many, many years. Actually, we've been using the predecessor of this predating the formation of the Mobile Internet Resource Center. So we've been fans of these route cellular integrated routers for a long time, and they've been evolving slowly over the years, but this right here, the BR1 Pro 5G, is the biggest jump in the entire history of the lineup because it is moving to, well, 5G cellular and also to Wi-Fi 6, uh, 802.11ax, so a major step up in the Wi-Fi integrated technology. So what is new and, well, what is all this newness going to cost you? Because that's also another place they're taking a pretty big jump forward. So. Before we get to the price, we'll just show you some of what's new with the features. Um, for one thing, the case is completely redone. It's a lot slimmer and sleeker than the old uh, Mark II. Uh, thinner, lower profile. Um, and these tend to get hot sometimes under operation, so it's nice to actually see these integrated heat sinks right into the case, and what you think over time will help this uh, you know, keep cooler under operation. Uh, on the back side here, We've got uh, three Ethernet ports, um, two LAN ports, and a WAN port that can also be used as a LAN port if you choose in the software interface. But the WAN port is um, 2.5 gigabits per second capable. So not usually something you'll run across in any consumer gear, but if you're hooking up to a high-end uh, AP1AX uh, switch, for example, on the, your LAN, that can actually handle 2.5 gigabits per second. Um, or to some other high-end networking switches and gears or something upstream that might be able to provide that level of speed, kind of upping the Ethernet input capability. And then the LAN ports are gigabit, gigabit uh, Ethernet ports. Um, something that is different on the back here is for the first time in this lineup here, uh, PepWave has gotten rid of the standard barrel power connector and moved to a Molex power connector that actually clips into place and locks in place. So less chance of the cord accidentally getting your power cord unplugged. But this means if you're replacing like a Mark II in your tech cabinet and you've already got one of those barrel power connectors wired into your um, RV or boat's 12 volt system, you're going to have to change out the power connector. So keep that in mind if you're looking to upgrade or change things out. And something else that is gone is the um, terminal block that you could have also used to directly hardwire to DC power is gone as well. So your only power input is that Molex connector, which is well, something to keep in mind. Um, on this side of things, you've got the Wi-Fi antennas. These are removables. You could use external antennas on the roof or anywhere else um, for Wi-Fi, but the Wi-Fi now is instead of uh, Wi-Fi 5, the older standard 802.11ac, this is Wi-Fi 6, 802.11ax. It allows for more um, local networking capacities. You have a lot more uh, Wi-Fi devices operating at full speed simultaneously, um, and the router should be better able to handle and juggle more devices if you have a lot of local Wi-Fi. For most typical Nomad installations and boats and RVs and stuff, you're not gonna overload Wi-Fi 5, 802.11ac much, but it's always good to be future-proof to have Wi-Fi 6. So, hey, great, it's there now. They finally in, in, embraced that techno radio technology. Now, on the back side here, we've got the um, four antennas for the um, 5G Wi-Fi, 5G cellular radio. Because 5G almost all, well, always requires four antennas, so four by four MIMO. Normally in an RV or boat installation, you wouldn't use these included little paddle antennas. You would use an antenna mounted on your roof and connected into here. But we've been testing this with just the included paddle antennas it comes with. And indeed, this 5G radio based on the Qualcomm X55 modem, um, modem chips that we've been seeing really, really great performance. We've been seeing over 400 megabits per second on uh, T-Mobile here in this location. And we've successfully connected to Verizon and uh, AT&T 5G as well. So it seems to be 
negotiating and connecting properly with all of the networks. Uh, at the moment, Verizon and AT&T 5G is usually not much better than 4G, not much to write home about, but seeing 400 megabits per second on T-Mobile is gives you a real taste of what next generation 5G is all about, and this kind of gets you into that future area. Now, AT&T and Verizon will be rolling out more 5G capacity in the future, particularly using um, 5G band N77, the C-band spectrum, and this modem does support that spectrum. So as these other networks start to expand and do more, this will support this. This does not uh, support millimeter wave 5G, so the super high frequency, um, very, very short range uh, 5G. This does not, most cellular routers will not support that sort of technology just because it requires completely different antennas that are a whole different technology, a whole different type of thing. So not likely to see that on a device like this anyway. But that's what's up on the, the 5G radio side of things. And then also a new twist for PepWave is they've switched from mini SIM, the big size SIM cards, to nano SIM on the BR1 Pro 5G. So the smaller SIM cards, this is, uh, makes it a lot easier because this seems to be what's in use almost everywhere now. So it makes it easier to move your SIM cards into here if you're migrating in between other devices without needing to use a card adapter like this. So you, know, you don't have to pop your cards out and stuff. And there was always the risk with the older um, pet waves. You heard one of the top support problems people had is they'd forget that they had a nano SIM and they'd put the SIM in the slot and it would get lost inside and require very expensive repair. So by going to the nano SIM slots on the router itself, they've got rid of that support potential issue. So that's kind of what's new on the hardware. We've been testing it out, it's been performing great. But now the biggest place they've made a big jump on this is well, they're replacing the BR1 Mark II, which is sticking around the product line, but uh, this was a $599 device, you know, kind of mainstream approachable for a single modem uh, cellular device. Um, the BR1 Mini was only $399, very limited. It doesn't have Wi-Fi as WAN features cut down in a few other ways. $399, $599, they're jumping this all the way up to $14.99 as the official price of this. So this is a big jump. It's a big jump in technology, but it is a big jump in price. So you'll have to really consider, do you want to invest in a router that is this expensive, a cellular integrated router that is this expensive now in the early days of 5G um, as technology is still evolving or you know, technology over time will be getting better, faster, cheaper, and the equivalent of this might end up being better, faster, cheaper in the years to come by the time the networks are finally at a point where the networks can really deliver a true 5G experience. Um, the other thing that this is sort of replacing, this here is the Max Transit 5G. So the, the Max Transit line was kind of the big brother of the BR1 line on PepWave, and the Max Transit 5G has been out for most of this year at $999. So still a big jump up from the Max Transit 5G to the BR1 Pro 5G. $9.99 to $14.99. But this is actually still a big jump over the um, uh, BR1, over the Max Transit 5G. So the Max Transit 5G is still kind of based on older, uh, slower internals. So even though it has the same X55 modem and the raw modem capabilities are there, the router inside of this, the actual uh, CPU components and stuff, we've, in our testing, we've never seen more than 150 megabits per second of cellular go through this. We've connected the same T-Mobile network here, and this seems to be pegging at around 150 megabits per second on 5G, which is still nice. This is running circles around it, 400 megabits per second. This, when it's running like that, the CPU on it is pegged at 100%. This seems to get around to about 15%. So it seems like it's got a lot more headroom, a lot more potential on the BR1 Pro 5G, because this is a whole new generation of internals. This is Wi-Fi 6, this is still the old Wi-Fi 5, and everything else. So we're assuming that at some point over the year ahead, um, PepLink is going to evolve the Max Transit lineup to have an equivalent a Ma so, uh, equivalent internal evolution with faster internal CPUs and uh, Wi-Fi 6 and other improvements as well. But if the 5G version of the mid-range uh, BR1 is $14.99, we can't even venture to guess what a next generation Max Transit 5G might cost. But definitely keep that in mind. We certainly wouldn't recommend the Max Transit 5G now anymore if you're looking for a single modem 
device, this seems to be much more future-proof than the Max Transit 5G. It is not dual modem, on the other hand, so you're not going to be able to get like a redundant connection like you would with a Max Transit Duo, where you connect to that non-5G to AT&T and Verizon simultaneously. So you're kind of facing with a dilemma of do you want a high-end 5G single modem device that can connect to one network, or do you want an older generation, something like a Max Transit Duo, which is still a top pick of ours, that can connect to two networks at once, but is not ready for the 5G future. Now, um, a few other quick things we've seen in our initial round of testing, just playing with this, uh, we've noticed that the band locking feature, a feature that we've loved in other PepWave routers, is not functional in the current firmware on the BR1 Pro 5G. Um, we've also noticed that we've not seen band locking working on any other 5G cellular routers yet, so it might just be something that the modem modules themselves have not enabled yet, but if band locking is an advanced feature you use to tweak your connection, like we do all the time on our uh, Transit Duo, does not work on this yet, keep that in mind. Um, we've also noticed that the um, AP controller to have the router control PepWave access points automatically to extend your local Wi-Fi network. That is not implemented yet. We've heard from PepWave that that's coming in future firmware for the BR1 Pro 5G. But right now, that's in the past been a dividing line between the BR1 line it does not have the AP controller built in, the Max Transits do. PepWave tells us the BR1 Pro, on the other hand, will eventually, and they enable it in software, have the AP controller. Um, there's a lot more. You know, this is a really interesting piece of hardware. This is kind of a new flagship for 5G cellular routers. Um, we're seeing some really great performance in our initial testing. Um, we're going to be doing a lot more playing with this, taking it out on into the field and experimenting within a range of locations. And we will be sharing all our ongoing experiences with the members who support us at the Mobile Internet Resource Center. So our MIA members will be able to Follow along in our testing forums to see how well this does for us and any other gotchas or catches we run into. So there it is, a first look at the absolutely brand new PepWave BR1 Pro 5G. These videos are brought to you by our premium members, our mobile internet aficionados. They make it possible for us to track this news and create these videos. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, subscribe to our channel, or better yet, consider becoming a member yourself.